The 2005 teen comedy Love Wrecked was not the first lesser known Amanda Bynes movie that I've seen. So I didn't go into it expecting the stories to take me to great heights. But I also didn't expect it to so clearly illustrate that we have a glass ceiling for women that is so low, it's actually more like the lid to a see-through coffin, and then we're burying them alive in it. And that's only after we make them fight aliens in their panties sometimes. Sure enough, this box office flop didn't come out in US theaters until 2007 after several re-edits to tone down the PG-13 content. Yet even when released as a family film, the overarching message of the movie remains that young girls are expected to be smart, but not that smart, sexually open, but not slutty, and always 100% ready to live in the wilderness and die of starvation to win the competition for a rich, successful boyfriend. So get in the life raft and hold on for a rushed story, flat characters, and a series of familiar tasting teen movie cliches, executed with the precision of a blindfolded firing squad, and in an Amanda Bynes installment of Clip breakdown. N -n 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 -n. Hello, television viewers. My name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other content here on the web, and we chop it into pieces like bamboo reeds so we can look at each individual clip and decide if it's worthy of keeping on the boat or if we are going to maroon it on an island. The point is, in this movie, nobody is actually marooned on an island. There's deception afoot, but before we get into it, Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see even more Amanda Bynes filmography like this. Also, don't forget to click that subscribe button if you're new to my channel. Also, I have merch available and a Patreon where you can access exclusive videos and virtual watch parties. The movie opens at a concert where for some reason it's just like particularly obvious that nobody other than the lead actress is making any sound when they shot this. Are you worried about that happening during or after the grand mall seizure she's currently experiencing? It's a little distracting. They told Amanda Bynes to just really bring it with those like excited flails. She's very enthusiastic for music. This is our main character, Jenny, and she's obviously obsessed with this musician, Jordan Masters, but so is the mean girl, Alexis, who comes up and introduces herself conveniently. I feel like this whole scene at the beginning is a little unnecessary, actually not even a little completely unnecessary. Jenny jumps into the crowd and crowd surfs as an attempt to make it over to Jordan. Oh, but also Alexis jumps up and is racing her like they're having a crowd surfing race, which I don't know if I've ever seen that on camera before, but we've certainly seen plenty of crowd surfing, which just looks like a nightmare to film. Okay, from this angle, we can tell that Amanda Bynes is not actually crowd surfing, but just being carried above everyone's head by some tall person, like she's a crate of Duraflame logs at Home Depot. Unfortunately, in real life, most young women would have the instinct that crowd surfing is less of a quirky teen fun time, and more of a subjecting myself to having drunken men dig their fingertips into my side boob and oblique skin type of thing. Of course, Alexis kind of manages to push Jenny onto the ground. This is just like one of a thousand times in the movie Jenny falls over. It's not as violent as in other Amanda Bynes movies we've seen, like She's the Man, but still, they use her getting bludgeoned quite a few times, or at least being like undignified and like clumsy. But either way, I guess she's graduated college, or no, she's graduating high school, but that would have been a better setup, I think, is like having her embarrass herself at graduation. I don't know, because they also could have then set up for us that she is a valedictorian, which she tells us here. She's like, I spent all four years studying. It's like, oh my God, do the graduation, such a better idea. Do you realize that I wasted all of high school just waiting for somebody to sweep me off my feet? Did you waste it or did you earn a high school diploma, which you need to move on to college and start defining yourself by something other than your relationship to a man? Jenny is more desperate to be in a relationship than I was when I almost entered that thruple. Turns out that just means there's like two people who get mad at you when you cheat on them. I didn't say I was perfect. I'm a devil and an angel too. Got a heart and soul and body. Let 
let's see what this love can do. As you can see, Jenny is packing up for her summer, 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 summer college, summer college high school work program. I don't know what kind of high school is doing a work program for you before you go to college, but it's clearly high school because she's still with her classmate, played by Jonathan Bennett. His name is Ryan in this movie. Anyway, she's packing up all of her stuff so she can leave her sleepy suburban Massachusetts town, which according to the tree outside is so quiet that the wind doesn't exist and birds aren't a thing. Do you live in the land where time stands still? Oh, I am jealous. I would save so much money at the beauty parlor, permanent manicures and oh, eyelash extensions. Oh, we have to meet the parents. I don't know why. They don't appear for the rest of the movie. Oh, I'm feeling weak. I might pass out. Oh, that's much better. Well, you're gonna make one hell of a doctor. No question. In fact, maybe she's good enough to skip med school altogether so she can start right away giving people used napkins to apply to their wounds. This movie finds exactly five instances to remind us that Jenny wants to be a doctor, along with five to 700 where she's competing with another woman viciously to earn the affection of some man whose talents are more frequently celebrated. It's good, it's good stuff. Did you watch this as a kid and then slowly come to the realization that you're a dumb, stupid idiot? Because I wouldn't be surprised. That's what it's telling you. Subtext matters. Teenagers can understand subtext. That's why the person at the McDonald's drive-thru felt threatened enough to give me extra sauce packets. They knew I'm for real. Okay, so Jonathan Bennett's character, what did I say his name just was? Ryan. Ryan, 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 got it. He comes in and he's like, I hope you're okay with me doing this, sir. And the dad's like, I don't care. They make it a joke all the time, basically that Ryan is friend zoned, which is just like this cliche, thing where it's like men and women can't be friends in a movie platonically without there being some unspoken sexual chemistry. Oh, by the way, these are 18 year old high school graduates now. So that's why this movie is allowed to be a little racy. Like I would love to see the PG-13 cut because the stuff that does make it through is uncomfortable. To me, an 18 year old is still a child if you're anything older than like 25, right? No hard and fast rules on that, but that's where I'm at. This is the finest resort in the Caribbean. I expect you to protect the image of the Sun Village Beach Resort at Crossessi Beach with your lives if necessary. <laughs> Did I make a joke? Only out of the like seven different dialects you cycled through during that line. His laughter was actually because he thought you were doing a bad Robin Williams impression. I feel like Alfonso Riviera was like, I told you I knew how to do all foreign accents. I didn't tell you I knew how to separate them out into distinct ones. I'm a big fan of Alfonso Riviera, not from Fresh Prince, which I never really watched, but from Unwrapped 2.0 on Food Network, where he teaches you how hard candies are made. And I happen to know he hails from Afro Trinidadian parents. So I don't know why he couldn't have just leaned into that and done a Caribbean accent of some sort, since this takes place in the Caribbean. He uses Spanglish words sometimes, but then in other times he straight up talks like the haunted candlestick from Beauty and the Beast. And yeah, I know his name is Lumiere, but he's a ghost and I don't approve. If you're an object that can move on your own, tell me how you're not a specter from the Devil Dome. The Devil Dome. Okay, so basically they decide that, oh yeah, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So this is weird. They assign the jobs and it's decided that Jenny here is going to be the lifeguard, which I feel like is the third or fourth movie where they just make some random chick the lifeguard because she will look the hottest in a bathing suit, I guess. Not because there's any sort of training shown or like certification associated with it. I mean, we know that Jenny wants to be a doctor, but Alfonso's character doesn't. Anyway, they make Ryan into a floater. So that's sort of a running gag. He's going to be trying out a bunch of different wacky jobs with physical comedy throughout. You can also tell that Ryan is deeply troubled by his secret affection for Jenny, his best friend. Man, I'm digging this old woman thing. She slides her Rolex my way, I'll be the I'll be the biggest you know. Excuse me, when you're done casually referring to women as can you run and get me my Shirley Temple that I asked for? And bring the whole jar of maraschino cherries this time. I wanna be staining those urinals red by the time I leave here this afternoon. I think it's safe to say that this movie is not super diverse. Also, like in addition to like that character, Ryan's friend constantly getting slapped and yelled at for harassing women basically who are on vacation. It's like, it shows every man being really pervy. Get out of Rocky World.
Does anyone else feel like they just got into a car accident? This sequence has so many uncomfortable shots of wet children physically touching that I think it's triggering inflammation in my body. I hate that in the wide shot, you can see when he lifted his hand, it accidentally jiggled her breast, which was just hanging in a close up also. And also, could they not find her a real lifeguard uniform to wear for this movie? And that's not real CPR she's doing there. I'd be like, why is that girl in a tankini biting that child's face? Is this a Netflix zombie movie come to life? What are you doing tonight? Why, you wanna hang out? Yeah, I mean, if, if you want to. Ryan. Please assert yourself. Jenny, can't you see Ryan is a submissive bottom? Don't try to change that about him. Not right before he goes to AMDA next year. That night they go to a show. This show is weird to me too. It's like they never really are super respectful of the Caribbean or any of the authentic parts of that. Is there something like this? No, it's just um... Like, to me, this seems like an unusual type of performance to be accompanied by salsa music, but I'm not from this area, so I couldn't say for sure. And in any case, kudos to Jenny for just being wacky enough to roll with it, and for refusing to experience anything without a handful of nonverbal noises that sound like Kermit the Frog on a toboggan. Nope. <laughs> Every two minutes, she's like, <laughs> And how come every big budget tween movie from the first decade of this millennium involved taking some thin popular actress and just and mangling their frail body on camera for a joke. Tripping, fighting, falling off buildings naked. You would think all of this was greenlit by sick perverts with like repressed aggression issues. Waka waka. Sorry, I think I meant to say wink wink, but I was still in Muppets mode. Oh, I miss Piggy. Nope, we're out of Muppets mode. I like how every minute of screen time has nothing to do with all in this movie like oh she gets pulled up on stage that could easily be something that like i don't know she knocks over the scenery and that makes all eyes are on her from the guy so like she's getting them in trouble already then it would lend credit to this scene next where he's like you have a little bit of impulse control don't you and she's like what's impulse control and it's like oh you know every medical word in the goddamn dictionary, but you don't know what impulse control means? Mm, convenient. Also, you know I hate a montage, and we just got done with Holiday in the Sun, where those Olsen twins were jet ski doing on every body of water in a hundred mile radius. So she's jet skiing now and snorkeling now. It's like, we get it, kids. You can do that at the resort. <laughs> oh, but get ready, because Jordan Masters has just arrived. We also got that exposition when Jenny and Ryan arrived at the resort that Alexis was was so happened to be working there too. And they were both like, everyone knows that this is Jordan's favorite resort and that's why we picked it. It's like, oh my God, how convenient that your high school in Massachusetts offers a work study summer program for recent graduates at a Caribbean resort where you get to do basically nothing. And it's the same one that your favorite pop star attends. Like this movie was written by a toddler. I just know it. Anyway, obviously as soon as she hears the news that what's his name? is here. Jenny has to get on that. Uh, People Magazine, News National. What? what? Oh look, it's Lance Bass. Although he also has an executive producer credit on this movie under the name James Lance Bass. Two separate names for two separate paychecks and production fees, thank you very much. We stan a business savvy gay icon. But I also like to pretend that James Lance Bass is Lance Bass's alter ego and it's just him with the Burt Reynolds mustache. And he showed up in the production meeting like, I reckon we give that fella Lance Bass a stab at the role of cell phone day. Dan. Yeah, his name is Cell Phone Dan because he's always handing cell phones to Kathy Griffin there and the manager. But here comes Jenny like a bull in a neonatal unit. I'm not going to sit here and ponder that hypo-realistic level of ass traction or theorize about what maketh her butt so slick. Why you ask? Because I can see the trick to this movie magic from my house. If you slow that down, you'll see the visible mop thing that's pushing the stunt woman. And then we have the visible white mat that Amanda Bynes was sitting on that they pulled. Really careful filmmaking here, really careful. Also, we get this underdeveloped 
point where like people are freaking out over Jordan and he's like, ugh, and he throws himself into the pool as though he hates being a pop star so much. And that's a very familiar kind of dynamic, like the begrudging pop star who escapes his life on some adventure with normal people, but they do not follow that thread at all. I mean, at least it would have added some texture. How does he feel about being a pop star? His character is very uneven. Like at the beginning, he comes off like this, like, uh, a little more like sympathetic, I guess. And then he does turn less sympathetic, but I don't know if he's nice and dumb or mean and manipulative. It's all hard to decipher. Luckily for Jenny, Ryan's job as a floater means he like knows this pop star's entire schedule because he's like, he's going on the booze cruise tonight. So the next scene, we don't know how, we don't see how Jenny is on this cruise dressed like a pirate. Right, Jason, who's the lucky girl or girls tonight? I don't know if she is anything contagious. Excuse me, ma'am, do you have time for a quick blood test so we can see if that powerful man who just slut shamed you is willing to have sex with you? I don't think you're gonna get that type of blood panel result back tonight anyway, jerk. Didn't you hear those Theranos machines were just a bunch of light brights melted together? Here comes Jenny with her cheap costume because this is the best resort in the Bahamas. I'm like, the best one for Nickelodeon Studios? I don't know what you mean. Two words for you, myocardial infarction. Stop eating. Okay, so we've got horribly offensive body shaming on both the port and starboard sides of the ship. That should make for a pretty smooth ride through this ocean of negative self image that movies like this created for young audiences. I don't know if this is cheating, but the one thing I would wanna bring to a desert island would be my Every Plate subscription. Oh, by the way, Every Plate are the sponsors of today's video. Every Plate, in my opinion, is the best meal delivery service that is on the market, and I've tried many of them. Some of them are so expensive that I, I'm like embarrassed to talk about how much I've spent on them. Especially now knowing that every plate offers the same delicious food for a much better value. In fact, their quality ingredients come pre-packaged in the perfect proportion. So I'm not buying a bag of spinach and letting it wilt because I forgot. It was hidden behind my raspberry ginger ale. I always try to lean into the work harder, not smarter philosophy, which is why I'm so grateful that all of my meal planning and grocery shopping is handled because of every plate's easy to use subscription service that lets me even swap out ingredients and sides. It makes me so happy that I get to just actually enjoy the cooking part of cooking. And it feels good knowing that I'm always having it delivered to my door at a consistently low price. Every plate always comes through and makes sure that I'm eating healthfully. You can get started with every plate for just $1.79 per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering the code NICTORAMEO179. Now I hope you're feeling nourished because we're going back into survival mode. It seems like I don't know if it's food poisoning or just from drinking. I think drinking. See, that's the kind of stuff they have to probably tone down and make a little more ambiguous when they wanted it to be a PG movie because he's throwing up over the side of the boat. Nobody sees him except Jenny who goes up to make her move. <laughs> Jenny, how does adding yourself to the list of people who went overboard make more sense than just running to tell someone on the crew? I understand that the script takes several chances to describe her as impulsive, but shouldn't she also have survival instincts that her impulses lead her towards? How come she's supposedly already smart enough to be a doctor pre-med school, but then when there's an emergency, she decides her best course of action is to go missing off of a boat? Never, never choose that for yourself. This. If you're a woman, there's already gonna be plenty of people trying to push you off of boats. Don't go making the leap for yourself. I don't condone it. And then the Coast Guard is like, oh, the, the storm is too, oh, my earring broke. Ow, it was hurting. Oh, I can fix that. It just came unscrewed. So yeah, the Coast Guard is like, we can't go back out there tonight. The storm is too bad. And then the next morning, these two luckily are in the life raft that Jenny threw overboard. Ah, why did you hit me? I heard an irregular heartbeat. That better just be emergency ocean behavior because as a real doctor, you understand why your patients might get confused when you slap their face for something heart related. I believe that was the second to last time this movie even bothers to make Jenny say something medical as an attempt to seem smart. Besides that, you won't see her career aspirations any more in this movie than you will those wacky parents of her who we saw at the top of act one. Although they did record some bonus as answering machine audio, which we hear after the press has already found out that the famous Jordan Masters has gone missing with a young girl. You've reached the tailors. 
Jenny's in the Caribbean, Ben and Bree are in the jungles of Indonesia. Well, good work, Ryan. At least you tried to notify Jenny's parents that their daughter was lost at sea with that one and only phone call to their landline that gave you further information about where to find them. Anyway, the hotel manager said your first job today is stripping Jenny's bed and putting all of her belongings in the dumpster. And remember to smile for the guests. Meanwhile, on this island, like as soon as they get aboard, Jordan Masters unceremoniously breaks his leg. He like is pulling the boat on shore and he's trips and then Jenny's like, I can tell it's broken from my eyes. So now she's sort of like running around on hands and knees for him, like trying to make things work, trying to catch fish. They have a little first aid kit, but she ruins the stupid raft with her flare gun. Meanwhile, back on land, it really kind of seems like nobody's that concerned with finding the missing people. Are you a sergeant? It's kind of a turn on. Who in the Samantha Jones taught these kids to talk about sex like they're post-college graduates and full-blown HPV carriers? It's so crazy to me that these movies aimed at teenagers would use dialogue to imply, unironically, that it's unusual for someone their age to have had sex. What does it say about society that we use media to essentially groom children so that the instant they become legal adults, they're ready to debut as fully developed sexual beings with automatic weaponized p it's very unnecessary and it's not normal for anyone out there listening it's okay to abstain from sex for as long as you feel comfortable you should only have sex as much as you want to and to the extent that you want to and if that's a lot that's great too as long as it's consensual and everyone's vibing like that's obviously great my robo p my choice that's how it goes that's the declaration i signed with my gel pen, okay? Milky gel pen. I made them reprint the Declaration of Independence on black construction paper for us. So right away, Jordan seems impressed with her brains. So that motivates Jenny to keep looking and keep finding food for them. And while she's looking at these eggs, something amazing happened. Eliza Thornberry. <laughs> Oh, she found that part of the hotel swimming pool that a free-flowing jungle river empties out into for some reason. It seems like that would eventually overflow with both dirty water and live snakes, but you can sell anything to people on vacation. That's why they love me at the airport newsstand. I'm always like, ooh, is this a new type of nut cluster? So this is where Jenny discovers that they're not on some crazy island hundreds of miles away. They're just on the other side of this very popular tourist island. Same one they were on. And she sees that the news knows they're missing. And then when Jenny finds her way back and is about to tell Jordan, he is so happy to see her after her long journey and was like, I don't know what I would do if we weren't going through this together, that it dawns on Jenny, she can use this situation to her advantage. So she sneaks over to the resort gift shop. She buys supplies such as makeup and Advil, food like bananas and fruit, clams that she's burying in the dirt like a loon. Also, they're still making Ryan do all of his work like he's training seals as part of being a floater. Like being a floater doesn't mean you just are an unskilled person doing highly skilled jobs. That doesn't help anyone. The news is coming up with all these crazy stories about what must be going on as these two are missing at sea. Still no word from Jason Masters or his female companion, Jenny Taylor. Was it love gone bad on the high seas? The jilted lover sending him to the briny deep? Hey, news media, it's still way too early to speculate if they're alive or dead, but just basically Based on what we know about murder on this planet, if anything, it was him who drowned her. And that's on fact. That's on fleek fact, mama. Yep, he's relevant saying in the relevant terms. In fact, when it comes to Jordan Masters and this unknown 18 year old woman, it's important that we figure out ASAP what happened on that boat. So the public knows whether to stop playing his music or buy his memorial cover issue of Rolling Stone. So yeah, Jenny uses this stuff to her advantage. She like paints her face with makeup and he's like, wow, you look beautiful. She's like, I found some berries. Meanwhile, there's this running gag where all of Jordan's people keep getting downgraded in the hotel to like 
like worse rooms and they're all crowded together because he's not there. Jenny runs out of money for supplies, so she has to run back to her room in the, you know, surreptitiously to grab her money and then she can't resist taking a shower during that time. While she's taking the shower, Ryan comes back and like is so glad to see her. So she reveals like what she's doing and he agrees to go along with it begrudgingly. Oh, and then annoyingly and in the same breath, Alexis shows up and she figures out what's going on. And it's like, oh my God, what? I hate all of this. Like there's no suspense built in. It's just like the second Amanda leaves the scene, Amanda's character leaves the scene, Alexis comes in and is like, and now I know too. So, okay, whatever. We're in the middle of the second act, people. You can see this movie feels really flat, right? I'm not sure why, but I'm having this phase where there are times when I suddenly need a really small amount of oatmeal or no one can go on with anything. I'm like, am I a hospital patient? Anyway, right as Jenny and Jordan are getting close, of course, Alexis has to come burst that little bubble. <laughs> I'm Alexis Michelle, and I am New York City's premier Broadway queen. Oh. oh good, a new story element that steps up the jealousy and cattiness of these women. I was starting to worry that those attributes were being overshadowed by the manipulation and deception. Just remember that all of the men in this movie remain innocent, empathetic, and likable. And that's how the world sees it. If you're not 100% Goody Proctor with her bonnet on, then we know for sure that you are a no bra wearing witch and possibly Lesbian. I just took a DNA test. Turns out I'm 100% Goody Proctor with her bonnet on. Okay, so Alexis shows up with this fake French accent and instantly catches Jordan's eye and like, it's like, ooh, maybe I like her more too. So that's gross. Meanwhile, more nonsense on the B story for Ryan. Pardon me for one second. Hurry back. Excuse me, that lady in there has elephantitis. No, she's from the Midwest. Mm. Again, with the body shaming. And also, I think it's proactive of her to store a little personal lubricant in a crease or two, especially before a massage. She doesn't know which way things are gonna go. So they keep pulling pranks on each other, the two women. You know, like Alexa's puts coffee grounds in her in Jenny's drink, and Jenny does this. Alexa just put coffee grounds on my shopping list, thank you. Is that a hot selling item at this luxury resort where I've seen zero children so far? The screenwriter was like, how can any of this be too convenient? It's literally a convenience store. Dummy, do you even know movies, dummy? Every time she turns a corner in this thing, it's like the box of Mr. Majajan, Majajan Magellan. You know the, the box, the movie with the box? I never saw it. Anyway, you can tell there's gonna be fart jokes there. <laughs> and Alexis puts ants in her hair, calls her dirty. Oh, and. And you can tell that what's his name is liking how they fight over his attention. This all sucks, this all sucks, this all sucks. Now the two girls are trying to keep him from noticing someone on a boat. Oh, Ryan's friend at the hotel is like, the reason I, you know, am so good with ladies is because I'm confident. A lot of times I strike out, but I just go for it. So that encourages Ryan to dress like a pop star and go make his move. And you hardly recognize me if you say Jenny, we're great together. But we're friends. Well, sometimes friends kiss. Haven't you ever watched every episode of Friends during a three month period of seasonal affective disorder? Yes, you have. Don't lie. Why does Ryan even want to be with this person who just spent like days and days pissing into the ocean and sh into holes. Also that she could win the affection of some pop star who sucks too. Like I would be like, okay, have fun with that girl. Also, when you go to college, I'm gonna ignore your Facebook request. The Coast Guard finds the like destroyed raft that they f got missing on. And so they call off the Coast Guard search. Coast Guard, Coast Guard, Coast Guard. <laughs> Say it more. Coast Guard and Post Guard rhyme a lot. That's great. That's a great songwriting resource for you lyricists out there. You're welcome. Go 900 hours. The order was given to suspend the search. Meanwhile, around the world, fans pray diligently that the popular singing sensation will be found alive. As for the young woman who is also missing, we're not even sure if her parents know about that yet. And everyone working at the hotel is visibly unconcerned. Because of this wake up call from Ryan, for some reason, she realizes how much she's putting people's feelings at risk by keeping them stranded on an island when they think they could leave. Like this guy has a broken ankle. I would say she's a real 
real negligent by not getting him the medical attention he needs uh, right away. What if that doesn't set right? Oh, I forgot, she's a doctor because she went to high school. No way in high school she learned how to set a broken leg. That's just, they don't teach it there. So she tells Jordan the truth and he's obviously livid at both of them, Alexis and Jenny, and gets on a boat and rides off. So Jenny starts making her way across the island right as a storm hits, like a hurricane, which somehow Alexis doesn't also get caught in. I don't know. Also, this friend of Ryan's is always like there with the like spy info. He's like, oh, I saw Jenny walking across the island. And before when she got on the boat, he's like, I saw Jenny getting on the boat with a waiter tray and a costume. It's like, wow, are you just f***ing watching people all day? Right, bring it on. You know it's a hurricane out here. You might get caught up in it, right? That's what True tokenism means one black character gets to make one cliche comment at a white character's expense. That's how American society perfectly and evenly balances out all of the chattel slavery and segregation. Because if there's one thing America has perfected as a country, it's checks and balances. Oh, by the way, you're ruining my life if my guns don't kill your kids. That's somehow the logic there. Okay, so Ryan rescues Jenny from a car incident. She's like about to slide into the river and he pulls her out and then they have to camp for a night and they fall in love that night, I guess. Cause she realizes, oh, he really does care for me. He's taking care of me and protecting me the way that she had to do for what's his name, Jordan. So when they get back the next day, they're ready to be boyfriends and boyfriends, but Jordan's not quite done with her yet. He basically is like, you have to get in front of the press and tell everyone how heroic I was this whole time and we can make this all go away. I really, I need you to help me out on okay, this. Okay, but I... No, no, no. this will all go away if we just play it right. Mm, that's exactly what those kids told me about the Jumanji board game we found, and all of them got eaten by vampire bats, so. Oh, the conference is happening though, and the, Alexis is like, oh really? This is your story that you were so heroic? And so she gets on stage about to ruin it, and that's when Jenny jumps in with this. See, I hate when a climax is all a speech in front of an audience, and then it's like, now I'll come up to the podium and resolve your thing, and then I'll come up and resolve your thing. It's like. This is not a f***ing valedictorian speech. This is my goddamn life. Who is the woman? One more question here. <laughs> Who is the lady? May I present to all of you the future Mrs. Jason Masters, Alexis Manetti. Oh. Wait, so she's the one who was actually stranded on an island? The girl who's been here at the hotel most of the whole time? Jenny is like, oh, n everything about me being on the island was just to cover up their affair. So I don't understand, like, so they made up that Jenny was ever there to cover up their love or they pretended to be on a stranded island for a getaway. Because if they were just pretending to be stranded on an island while they were having an affair, wouldn't that cause more public outrage? I wonder if it's supposed to be unclear, the resolution to the entire movie or if it's just bad writing. Actually, using context clues, I think I got my answer. All the reports have you on the island with Jason. No, my boyfriend is Ryan Howell and he's standing right back there. Why would the reporters even care about him back there? She basically just said he had no part in it. They're like, this just in, someone's boyfriend who has actually nothing to do with this story also exists. Like what is going on here? No sense in the head, no sense in the head. Now that's what I'm talking about. Wait, hold on. Cause this character is now so well-rounded that it's causing my screen to lag. This isn't a 3D compatible device. If this character were any more of an uncomfortably horny stereotype, they would have illustrated him into the frame as an anime schoolgirl. But now Ryan and Jenny kiss cause they're the two for each other. Uh, really you two? Production rented out a dance studio for three weeks of rehearsals and this is what they get? I told them we should have also hired a dance instructor to go along with it. I'm pretty sure they just sat the whole time on yoga mats and gossiped about the costume department drama. But that's all there is to it. Alexis and Jordan live happily ever after. Like they actually get married. So I'm like, those characters are so flat and unrealistic that they actually just married strangers.
This movie, I feel so bad that Amanda Bynes got stuck with such unappealing projects as a child. Anyway, what did you think of this one, both as a child and rewatching it now with here with me? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see even more clip breakdowns on Amanda Bynes content. And most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button. I upload two new videos every week, so turn on notifications. You always wanna be the first to know when I'm coming round the mountain on an island with some food for your survival. Anyway, I also also have merch and a Patreon where you can access bonus content. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you for surviving the jungle with me today. I will see you next time. Watch.